Hey there, this video is about the Sony a7R5. I took a recent trip down to Atlanta to work on a Star Trek film, so if you've been wondering where I've been the last few weeks and haven't been posting videos, I've been pretty busy. <laughs> so here are a couple of shots just to see a little bit of what was going on on set. These were not taken with the a7R5, but I just wanted to show you a little bit what's going on here. I got to shoot on my red Komodo the whole time. It was an absolute blast. Uh, moving forwards, all the footage you'll see here was shot on the Sony a7R5. Now this is going to be a different type of video than I usually do. I usually like to make these technical comprehensive reviews, but this is gonna be more of a user experience. I decided to take the a7R5 with me uh, to this trip and on set to just record some BTS, mainly video, a couple photos, which I'll show you later on. And it was mainly just to see if I liked the camera. I got to work with some really cool friends of mine. You of course probably recognize Brandon Talbot, the co-host of the 16 Stops podcast that I do with, uh, with him. And this is Jeff Fagan, who is also a really good buddy of mine who was DPing the project. I got to shoot with this camera in a lot of different lighting situations. Of course, lower light like you see here, also in mixed lighting and also using the lighting from the set. So a, a big variety of things. I did get a bunch of footage, but of course there's some stuff I can't show you just because of the people that were in it and stuff like that. But I was able to capture quite a few moments and overall it was it was a really good experience. The things I was really looking forward to trying out was the you know the new IBIS system, which you can see here, all of this stuff was shot handheld uh, with just using the IBIS in the camera, and I think it performed really well. Also in terms of autofocus, you know, to see how how well that did, especially in lower light, and it did perform pretty well. And like usual, I don't really do much photography in general, so you're not gonna see too much about that in this video but I haven't really seen too much about the a7R5 in terms of shooting video, so I wanted to take it with me, capture some moments, and share my experiences with you. So as I said, this video is not going to be a super technical, comprehensive review of this camera, but more of a user experience. And before I get further on this video, I just want to stop and give a huge thank you to b &H Photo who lent me this camera and allowed me to test and review and share my experiences with all of you. So like usual, I recommend if you're looking to pick up some camera gear, go check out b &H Photo. It's where I buy all of my stuff from. There are links down in the description for the a7R5 and all the camera gear that I use on a regular basis. So you might be wondering why someone like myself, a videographer and a content creator, why am I interested in a 61 megapixel photocentric camera? Well, I'm pretty curious about a couple of the new tech features that are in this camera. Of course, the new autofocus system with that new AI chip it has a lot more sub detection modes. In my opinion, Sony has class leading autofocus anyway, so it's really cool to see them improve it and it works really, really well. Uh, also, the bendy, tilty, flippy screen is the first one that Sony made and it's been a joy to use. Uh, also, the stabilization is Sony's best stave. It has eight stops of stabilization. So I was really curious what that looks like. So right now I'm shooting on the 16 to 35 G Master Mark I at 16 millimeters and I have the standard stabilization on. So let me try the active stave in this camera. And now this is the active stabilization. So from what I've seen, it's pretty stable. And this is a big deal with Sony because a lot of their lenses are not stabilized. So having the ability to have even more stable footage if you're vlogging, just getting a static shot, or also just using any sort of lens, you don't have to worry necessarily so much about having stabilization in the lens if you're just hand holding the camera. So really cool feature. And to give you a little bit more sense of the active stabilization, this is me walking down this gravel path pretty much at my normal walking speed. And I'm just holding the camera in front of me at 35 millimeters. So in terms of image quality, I think this camera looks great. It's pretty much what you'd expect out of any of the modern Sony mirrorless cameras. They have a really pleasing image. Shooting S-Log3 is great. It's really easy to grade and it has a decent amount of dynamic range. Now this camera doesn't have as much dynamic range as some of the more video focused cameras. But as you can see in the shot here where I'm kind of in the shade and you got the bright background behind me, you got a good amount of dynamic range. 
So the image is pretty clean when you're shooting at the base ISO of 800 in S-Log3, but one thing I do want to point out is I was a little bit disappointed in the low light performance of this camera, and it's kind of as expected. So hopefully you saw earlier on with the behind the scenes shots, there was a couple of noisy images. Also, I took the camera out and went out for dinner one night, and we're sitting outside. It was really poorly lit. I, got, I think I had the ISO up to about 2500, and uh, you're just getting a lot of grain in the images, and we try to raise the exposure a little bit in post. Of course, you introduce more noise so again not the best low light camera but personally it's kind of what i expected with an older high megapixel sensor so why would someone like myself pick up the a7r5 well if you have a video focus camera like an fx6 fx3 a7s3 this is a great B or C camera to any of those cameras because they'll match pretty easily and it's really nice to have a hybrid camera in your kit that you can also use for really good photography because this is a fantastic photography camera. Another great option for that would be the Sony a7 IV, which I own for an extended period of time. I did lots of tests and reviews and made a whole bunch of videos on this channel about it. I think that's also a great option for a hybrid camera that can fill in as a B and C camera. I don't have the a7 IV anymore to compare with the a7 or V, but those are both great options. As a videographer, it's really nice to have a B or C camera that can take really good photos. So I think the A7R5 could be really helpful for a lot of people. Now that I'm back in the studio, I wanna talk a little bit about the ergonomics and the design of the camera. So to me, it's very similar to pretty much all of the recent Sony Alpha releases in terms of the buttons, dials, layout, card slots, all that kind of stuff. I wish we were done with these flappy strap holders, but we still have these. To me, it feels a little bit heavier than some of the other alpha cameras like the a7 IV. I don't know if it's because of the heat sinks, the new IBIS system, whatever. <laughs> uh, it, is, it, feel, it does feel pretty heavy, which makes it feel solid to me. I don't know, just my what, I've, what I observed from this. Like I said, the tilty flippy screen is absolutely incredible. It is so cool to have. And I have to say also that when I watched videos about this when the camera was released, I thought that the uh, you know this is the quality was going to be an issue on this, but it is very sturdy and stiff, and I don't think it will be too many problems with this. Of course, if you abuse it, it might be a problem, but it feels really really nice to use and very solid. Like usual, I don't love the LCD screens that Sony puts on their cameras. I don't think they're as good as some of the other companies, but I do like the implementation of the positioning of this LCD screen. In terms of the EVF, this is Sony's best EVF in terms of resolution. One thing I noticed when I was out shooting those night scenes when we were out for dinner was I put up to my eye and the image in the EVF was way grainier than it was on the LCD screen or when I brought it into the computer. I actually showed my buddies that I was with and they thought they saw the same thing and thought it was pretty weird. I did have the resolution and the quality setting up as high as possible. So I don't know if it was just my copy, but it was pretty weird. I do think the stabe in this camera is really good and it performed well both in for vlogging and also for static shots. I didn't get to test it out with longer lenses, but it's always nice to see this tech improving in Sony cameras because most of their lenses don't have stave built in. The autofocus worked really well, but I really only got a chance to test it with people. In my opinion, like I said before, Sony already has the best autofocus and it just continues to improve, which is just awesome. In terms of photos, of course, it did great as expected. I don't really take a lot of photos and I don't talk about that on this channel, but I did get some great pictures when I was uh, on set. And as I said, not surprised. Every time I get to use a high megapixel, high-end photography camera, it's really cool to me because you just get so much detail and the ability to crop in. So really, really cool. And like I said earlier on, it's great to see even a high megapixel photo-oriented camera like the a7R5 to have decent video specs. It's not going to be as good as a video focus camera like an FX3 or FX6, but it does do 4K60 with a crop. It doesn't do 4K 120. It even shoots an 8K. And there are some issues and limitations with it in terms of video, like rolling shutter and having less dynamic range. But as a videographer, I love to see these hybrid cameras that are absolute beasts for photography be able to use as a B or C camera to your main video camera. And then if you're on a job and your client needs a few stills, well, you have a camera that can do that. And for me, I use cameras like this, of course, for taking thumbnails and personal stuff. So it's really nice to have both features in the same camera. And for me, in the Canon world, it's just like having an R5C or an R6 II or an R7 or something like that as a B cam to the C70. So I love to see that these cameras have good video specs as, as well. So who's this camera for? If you are solely a videographer or pretty much do mostly video, 
I would not recommend this camera. There are much better cameras for the price. At the time of recording this, this camera is selling for $3,900. I definitely recommend an FX3 or an A7S III. But if you're someone that does a good amount of photo and a little bit of video, this could be a great option. Or if you need a B or C camera that can double for stills, again, something like this, or the A7 IV would be a great bet. Don't discount the A7 IV just because it has less megapixels. I think it's a little bit better than the A7R5 for video, but uh, very cool camera, lots of cool tech in here, and it was a lot of fun to play with. If you're curious about the Star Trek project that I was talking about earlier on in the video, it's called Axonar. I'll put a link down below if you want to check that out. I'll be talking more in depth about my experience on the next podcast, so if you haven't checked out our podcast, please go do that. There's a link down in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Jim, you wearing a Hawaiian shirt today? I always wear Hawaiian shirts when it's hot. Because they let me breathe. Been there, done that. I'll be on YouTube. Oh, okay. Come with me? Going, yeah, let's go. Okay, we're gonna, uh, this is not that kind of show though. It could be. It's not that kind of show. It could be. I could not, no, it's not that kind of show.